Thank you, Father. Thank you, our precious Father. The unchangeable God, we say thank you tonight. The God that never fails, we exhort you tonight. Lord, one more time, we say take the glory, take the honor, take the praise. From beginning till now, you have proved yourself God in our life. We are here to say thank you. Be magnified and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody shout out amen. Our God is good and his mercies endures forever. Amen. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I was singing some Yoruba song during the week. I was trying to sing it today, but all of a sudden it doesn't come. Maybe I, 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 I'm scared that some people that hear more Yoruba than me. And so if I sing it, they say, my God, this guy is destroying the language. Amen. But no matter what you are going through, the God Almighty is more powerful than that thing. Amen. Remember who you are. God said you are a king. And anything that is dominating your life before the end of the week, God will give you victory. Amen. Amen. Now, when you hear God say that you are above principalities and powers and dominion, whatever that is dominating your life, God said you are above it. So you don't walk in, in that level where you think that this situation, there is no answer. There is an answer. Amen. What did I say? There's what? God is good. Praise be to God. If you have your Bible, we going to, I'm going to take you through the Beatitudes. What did I say? The word? It is a statement of uh, uh, many revelation that Jesus gave us from that place that I want you to look at today because it's very important for you and I to understand that. One thing I want to assure every one of us here tonight is the word of God is a producer of faith. The word of God is the word, the producer of faith. Without Bible, there's no faith. And without faith, there's no life, according to my Bible. Praise God. Now let me put it let me put it again. The word of God is the producer of faith. That is what the Bible said in the book of John, chapter number 20, and verse 31. He said, These things are written that you and I may believe the only Son of God. And because we believe, guess what? We will now, but these things are written that you might believe the Son, the Jesus, the Son, the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you might have life through his name. In other words, without you believing or without you having faith, there's no life that you have. God said in John 3, 36, he said, any man that believe in the Son of God have everlasting life. But those that don't believe, they, are, they don't have life, one, and the wrath of God is upon them. Think about that. God's own curse is upon a human being who say, I don't believe. So when it comes to faith in the word of God, we get faith through the word of God. If the Bible was not written, there wouldn't be anything like faith. What is faith? So it is written for we to believe. And when we believe, guess what? We have life. Is someone listening to the word of God? Now listen to the two scriptures. I just put them together to let you know that when you believe, you have life. John 3.30 says, that is what it says. He said that he that believeth have what? Everlasting life. And she shall see what? That individual shall see what? Come on, say life. Come on, let me hear it again. You have everlasting life and you shall see life. But the one that don't believe, he will not see life. And second, he will not be what? And the wrath of God is what? Ah, oh, Jesus. So the word of God is the producer of faith. Let me hear you again. The word of God is what again? And the word of God is the producer of hope. I read it from my book. That if you want hope, look into the book because it is there. It will give you hope. It will make you to know that somebody called Job went through so many things, but God didn't let him die in that situation. 
So when you read it, you too can have hope that if Job came out, I too could come out. Someone listen to God's word. So the word of God is the producer of faith. Why? Because Romans 15 verse 4, he said that the word of God will give you an eye of hope. Romans 15 verse 4, he said everything that is written at four times is written for our learning. That we through, what? Patient and comfort of scriptures, huh? Might have hope. So if you want hope, don't begin to look, oh, what am I going to get hope? No. Open this book and there are too many informations here that will help you to have hope. So you don't live your life and say that, I don't think, I don't know how tomorrow is going to be. No. You have to decide and know how tomorrow is going to be. Why? Because the book of God has told me this, uh, uh, told me that. So it's a producer of what? Faith. And it's a producer of what again? Hope. The third thing the word of God has produced or can produce in your life. Or oh, let me give one more scripture about hope. Psalm 119 verse 49. Psalm 119 verse 49. David says something wonderful there. Praise the Lord. The book of Psalm 119, what is there? He said, I thought on my 49, not 59. 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, which thou hast what? Caused me to what? Hope. That is this book. So anytime you read this book, believe God. So if you don't have hope, ah, that person doesn't have hope, so he's going to commit suicide. Are you crazy? You, because you are not studying this book. Immediately you study it, it will produce what is called hope. And say, I can't die. I am not a candidate of death. I refuse to die. This is not my end. I can't end my life like this. What will be the story that they will, talk, uh, they will write about me? That a man passed on this planet and he couldn't affect his generation. At the end, he killed himself. Am I? Oh, what is that? But because of these scriptures, I have hope that it will never be anything uh, wrong but better because God is there. Someone listen to the book of God? This is it. So one the word of God make you to have faith. The word of God will help you to also do what? Have hope. The third thing the word of God will do is to make you to obey God. It will make you to do what? Because some people think that, okay, obedient, obedient, how do you? God said to the man, Moses, he said, write it down. Tell all these kings that anyone that want to succeed in life, they should copy what is in the book and keep it by themselves. So that they can have a long-lasting throne or kingdom. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. The book of Deuteronomy. Are you there in Deuteronomy 17? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy. Chapter number 17. Deuteronomy. Whichever way I say it, I hope you get it. Deuteronomy 17. Are you there? Deuteronomy 17 and verse 18. Let's see what 18 says. Whoever helped me. Uh -huh. When a king sits on the throne of the kingdom, of his kingdom. Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on. What should the, the king do for himself? Does he have to ask his PA to write for him? He said, who should write? Oh, come on. Who is going to write the thing himself? Say the king. Say the king. The king has to do what? You see, man of God, he said that this book, he said, this is the book the Levite is reading. The king also must take it verbatim and copy everything that is here and keep it by himself. Why should God ask not to give him a copy of the Bible, but rather the king should copy them? Because if you take the pain to copy that which is written here, that's why when I see people who are not writing, when preaching and going on, I'm surprised. What are they listening to? Are they having anything? Are they going to be able to come up with something tomorrow? Because the Bible said that he told the king, continue reading, Mama. He said, No, read the same verse 18. Read it. It shall be when the king sits on the throne of his kingdom, he will write for himself, not his secretary, not his peer. He said, King, you have to write this book for yourself. Copy it of this law in the book out of that which is it before priest the Levite. You know what? It's the Levite that were handling this book. But God said, as a king, you got to copy it yourself and put a copy beside you. Why? Continue. The, the, the foreign verse. 
It shall be with him. When you have written it, it shall be with you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And be careful to observe. One, to fear God. And two, to observe it. Because if you write it yourself, that's why I'm surprised of the people that wrote certain things here and said that I'm going to be committed. Every day, God, you're going to see me in church, sir. No way. My tithe, I will give you, sir. Oh, no. I will put to first, sir. People write things and they still forget. And you think, okay, God is going to be, oh, God, you know, you, you, you understand. You understand. At times we talk like God is our classmate. God, you must understand. You know, um, it's not me. You know, I'm supposed to. God, you understand. As if he didn't understand from the beginning. As if he was the one pushing you. Bible said the reason why people are condemned is because one, they don't know the scriptures, neither the power of God. Two things. They don't know the word of God. They don't know the power of God. For that reason, people do things at the end of the, at the, end of the day say, we didn't know that. Then it's too late. So today, I, I'm just showing you, this is, a, this is not part of my message, but I'm just showing you the power the word of God carry. that if you can take time, have you finished reading it? Read verse 20. He said that if he read, write this book and put it beside him, one, he will fear God, two, he will obey God, his heart will not puff up, he will not be proud, he will be able to concentrate on the word of God, knowing that it is God that put him there and he can kick him out any day. Read it. Continue. Finish it. With you write it. That's what you see. I want you to understand that. God was sure that if the king write it himself, he will not turn to the left or to the right. If the king is the one who wrote it down, if you are the one writing it down, not somebody writing for you. Because some of us, it was, this Bible is written so we cannot, we say, well, somebody write it, we can read it. But for it to sink in you, where you become practically Bible on this earth, you must write anytime you are in church. Write something that a man of God, whoever understands here to say something. It will help you. Praise the Lord. It will help you and give you. If God would tell Moses, write it, the commandment down. Write it down. Write what I'm saying down. Child of God, anytime you come to church, learn to write things down because it's going to benefit and help you. You will go back to your notes. This is what I wrote down. I can't, mis I can't mismanage my life. Why? Because it will be a curse for on, on me on that day. So here, because I said this is not what... I'm, I'm just going to, uh, um, this is not what I'm teaching, but I'm just giving you a primary of what, where I'm going tonight. Three things I've said so far. The word of God is the producer of what? Come on, let me hear it again. Say it for the third time. The word of God is the producer of what? Second. Hope. Come on, let me hear you. Come on, let's hear hope. And the third thing, the word of God is the producer of what? Obedience. And the final thing, the word of God promote grace. Say the word of God promote what? That's it. First Peter two verse two, he said that as a, as a newborn babes desire the sincere milk of God that you may grow thereby. Listen, when you desire this word, it will give you certain grace that others don't have. So it is vital and important that you and I begin to, to eat it. That is the word I will always use. The word grow or eat, uh, desire it. Another way is eat it. Eat it. Eat the word. So that you grow in grace. So that you become more powerful. If without the word of God, there is no faith. And without faith, there is no life. Matthew 21, 21. He said, all things are possible. Mark 9, 23. All things are possible. Everything is possible all by faith, if you believe. Luke 1, 45. The woman Mary said that, it shall be a performance of the things God has said about me because I'm a believer. Galatians 3, 19. He said that because any one of you that believed, you'll be like Abraham, your father. Why? Because Abraham believed and he was blessed. I want somebody to know that if you don't see what is written or you don't hear the word of God, 
There's no way you can build your faith. So you got to know the word of God is not written for it to be in the closet or be in the wardrobe or it be on a table that in it, uh, you, when you are coming to church only on Wednesdays and on Sundays that you open it. It's your life and you got to open it. Praise the Lord. Jesus came up from the church. He was in Nazareth. And when he was there, the Bible said there were whole many people that came around him. But this time he saw the number were so many. So he decided to go to the mountain top. And on the mountain top, he started to teach them. And he started to teach them. And the first statement that came up from his mouth, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they the, the, the kingdom of God belongs to them. These are the kingdom of God. Now, listen to this. Because many people say, Pastor, don't talk to us about blessing. You talk to us about holiness. You talk to us about righteousness. But Jesus Christ started the public, the first public ministration by telling the people, look, you can be a blessed man if you are this. Or you can remain where you are. Friends, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus didn't stop there. He said, if you mourn, you'll be comforted. He said, if you are pure in spirit or pure in the heart, you shall see God. No, so Jesus was telling us, the only way we can attain certain blessings is when we do certain things. Blessing is not something we pray for. It's Jesus was showing you and I, blessing is something we do to get. Oh, I want, I want somebody to do, I want somebody to understand it. This is my microphone. It's gone somehow. I need another one, please. It's, it's okay. Praise the Lord. You, you hear what I'm saying? So, blessing is not just a matter of a, uh, I'm praying for it to come. Jesus was showing us one thing you got to do. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So you cannot say that, Lord, I'm a child of God and you're not a peacemaker. Now when you see people, two people are fighting, you are fooling it. So, oh yeah, go ahead. Remove your, you want me to help you to remove your clothes? Beat them for me. This person, he has troubled me. So beat her or beat him. Oh, are you a peacemaker? Now, when I read that, I realized that there are too many things that is in this book. That if you don't take time to read them, you will never be able to actualize some of the blessings God has said for you and I. Let's take for instance, taking care of the poor. Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 14, he said in verse 13, when you are having a party, invite the poor, the maim, the blind, those who cannot pay you back. Now how many of us that we do a party, you see, we're going to look for a blind man, even if he's a member of the church. And he said, Lame man, he's a member of the church. Ah, no, Pastor, I need my friends. Hello? But Jesus said, If you want to have blessing that only God can give you, if you, he said, if, you, if you want to come to a place that when you resurrect on the last day and God recompense you because say, those people don't have ability to pay you, verse 14. He said they, they cannot pay you back. So you know what God would do? God himself on the day of resurrection, he said you did good to somebody that was poor. Somebody that was blind. Somebody that was lame. So I'm going to repay you. That one, there's no prayer point in that. That is what I'm trying to let you understand that these blessings we are talking about, every one of them, it carries some work you got to do. There's something you got to do to be blessed. It doesn't just come because you are a good guy or you are in church every day. No, God expects you to do more. One of them is this is the, these people cannot pay you back. Now, like I said, Thanksgiving was coming. We were looking for our friends. Who is my friend? I'm going to get my friend or my family. How am I going to invite a, a cripple to come and eat with me? I say, if the, the person is a member of this church, and they're a cripple, ah, listen, it is therefore an important thing that we want to activate blessing because in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 15, when you read verse 10, he said, if you don't want to be, if you want to be a man, whereby 
Whatever you do, it prospers. Whatever you place your hand to do, it prospers. He said in verse 7, then take care of the poor. Deuteronomy 15 verse 10. He said, if you want to prosper, whatever you stretch your hand to touch, it prosper, or whatever you do, become blessed. Then he said, consider the poor. You see what I'm saying? Shall bless thee in that that works, and in that thou put thy hand to do, it shall be blessed. Somebody is being blessed here today in Jesus' name. Because in your mind, you have a good heart. You want to see people who are less fortunate to be blessed. That is what God is looking for. Praise the Lord. I'm still on the Beatitudes. So this is a, the, I was quoting Jesus' one. So I'm teaching you the one he gave me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hello. Jesus gave us the, uh, the, the Beatitudes, a statement of blessing, blessing. But this is the one he gave me. This is the one the Holy Ghost gave me. This is not the one that Jesus was quoting there. So pray, I hope you, got, you understand what I'm saying. So I'm also showing you another level of blessing adding to what Jesus gave us. So I'm not going off the book. I'm still in the book. So just be patient with me. Let's see Proverbs 22 verse 9. Proverbs 22 verse 9. He said there are people that have a, what is called a, 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 a generous eye. They have a generous eye. They, are bountiful, they have a bountiful eye. They are staunch givers. They have eye to give their own food to the poor. God says such people, they are blessed. Look at the word there. He that had a bountiful eye shall be what? Come on, they shall be what? Why? Because.
name I know. Let's sing it again. There is no other name. Sing there is no other name I know. There is no other name. Sing it again. There is no name I know. There is no other name I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No name like Jesus. No one can be compared with him. There is no other name. I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alemra no mosikataya. Spirit of the living God. Take over this moment. Be lifted and be glorified. There is nothing we can do. We have nothing to offer. Use us to affect life. Change somebody's life through your word. In Jesus' precious name and everybody say amen. amen. Take your Bible quickly before we go into the word tonight. Take it to the book of Luke chapter number 4. The book of Luke 4, you're going to pray. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 6. The 6th verse. Whatever translation you've got, we can read together. But I have my King James version tonight. I want you and I to read in company the word of the Lord. And children, if you all can stand up on your feet, everybody, do yourself a favor by standing up to read the word of God. Luke 4 and verse number 6. Let's read together. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever would I will, I will give it. Look at somebody you don't mind looking at and say, neighbor, neighbor. whatever your ancestors, whatever, your ancestors. Whatever, glory, whatever glory, whatever power, whatever power they have delivered to the devil. Tonight, tonight, you are taking it back. Taking it back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at it again. Devil said, all the power all the glory, all the honor that you're supposed to have, it has been given to me. And I give it to whomsoever I will. That's the devil speaking to Jesus. Now some of us, where we are coming from, our mothers agree with the devil. So the glory that's supposed to come to us, the honor that's supposed to come to us has been taken. So you are born again. You pray, 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 pray. Nothing seems happening because the devil said, no, your parents made an agreement with me. There was transaction that happened that for that reason, you are not permitted to get married. You are not permitted to have your baby. You are not permitted to have that glory. That honor that's supposed to come to you, you don't, you are not permitted. He said, it has been given to me by your parents. Adam gave it to him. So he was telling Jesus, you can't get it except the blood. And Jesus shed his blood for you and I. That's why you got to stand in the name of Jesus. Any transaction that has gone on through my parents that have made the devil to have power to the extent of boasting that everything has been delivered to me. Your parents deliver you to me. Your parents covenanted with me, agree with me and say for you, this is how far you go. He said there's a power, there's glory, but he said, you are not getting them because it is with me. But somebody got to take it by violence. Somebody got to do what? Oh, yeah. That is where you and I are going tonight. That in the name of Jesus, Satan, according to the word of God, because Jesus died, because he shed his blood, I take back that honor for the family. That honor you have stolen from the family. That honor whoever delivered to you, whether my forefathers or my mothers or my great-grandmothers, whoever that delivered the glory that's supposed to come upon me and my children, the power that's supposed to come upon us, tonight I take it back. Come on, lift up your voice. Let's begin to wage you on right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he told the devil it is delivered to me. You have, uh, the father, Adam, made an agreement with me and I have it. In the name of Jesus, whoever that have made agreement with our destinies, agreement with our career concerning our children, concerning the honor of God, the glory of God, the power of God in our life tonight. We come by the fire of the Holy Ghost against all such powers in the name of Jesus. Somebody come up, declare the word of the Lord. 
declare the word of the Lord. He says to Jesus, you are not going to have it unless you bow to me. We will not bow to the devil. We will not bow to every power of darkness. We are taking it anyway. We are taking it by force through the blood of the Lamb of God. Hey, Master Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by your blood, we take that thing where every transaction we abolish it. Agreement of our fathers, agreement of our mothers, that they agree with the devil, that they have delivered the glory that belonged to the family to the devil. We take it back by the blood in the name of Jesus. Hey, Masakataya. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to do one more favor for somebody. Anybody that is close by you, look at the devil speaking to the king of kings. He said, this thing was delivered to me. And I have it. If you want to have it, you got to bow and worship me. Because if you don't do it, listen, you won't get it. But thank God, Jesus said, I I'm going to get it anyway. Bible say, I will lay down my life. In the book of John 10, when you read 18, he said that I have this power from my father. I have this commandment from my father that I can lay down my life and I'll take it back again. I'm going to take it by my blood. Praise the Lord. He said, I'm going to take it anyway. So by my blood. And that is the blood we are using. Look at somebody and begin to pray that any glory that's supposed to be on you now, that is not there today by the word of the Lord. I claim it now for you. I decree it now for you. You will not die but you see this glory. The power of God. Every transaction your parents made, any transaction your father or your mother made over your life that deny you of greatness, I abolish it. I stand against it. I release the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of God upon your life, the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, 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 somebody come on. That glory is coming back, that honor is coming back, that power is coming back, that joy is coming back, that marriage is coming back alive. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, man, namasadabaya. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you for that word. We receive that glory tonight. By the word of the Lord, any transaction that had gone on by our forefathers and the devil that has given the devil the strength and the foothold over our life, we stand by the blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood of atonement, and interrupt every such decision. We take back our glory. We take back our marriages. We take back our children. We take our prosperity in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, let all men that are here tonight never remain the same for what you have done in our lives. In Jesus'